I originally planned to do a video on Dead Rising 3 next, however a few of you reminded me that that's not quite covering everything. Yes, there was a full-fledged game in between, and we are talking about Dead Rising 2 off the record. So, let's return to Fortune City, take a look at this game, and see if it's any good. One year after the release of Dead Rising 2, Capcom Vancouver gave the world a reimagined version of the game titled Off the Record. This new version was essentially a what-if scenario, replacing Chuck Green with Frank West, the protagonist from the first game, among a few other changes. In the aftermath of the Willamette outbreak, Frank West became something of a celebrity. Sadly, the fame got to him and it all fell apart. When Frank watches an advert for the game show Terror is Reality, he sees an opportunity to get back in the public eye and regain relevance. A major revision to the story is that Frank's never framed for the Fortune City outbreak like Chuck was. Instead, everything is placed on Stacy, the leader of Cure, and Frank only wants to find the truth because he selfishly thinks returning to his journalistic roots and breaking the story will get him back in the game. Besides that, changes to the plot are few and far between until some large shake-ups towards the end of the game. Frank experiences many of the same events Chuck did, and even the majority of voice clips and animations in cutscenes remain unchanged. Ultimately, this version of events is considered non-canon. At best, it could be classified as an alternate timeline retelling of Dead Rising 2. The gameplay is very much the same as it was in Dead Rising 2. You'll be roaming around the malls and casinos of Fortune City while completing story missions, saving survivors and killing psychopaths in side missions, as well as searching for Zombrex. There are a few minor tweaks under the hood. For example, Frank's hand-to-hand -hand combat moves differ to Chuck's, the supplementary upgrades that accompany leveling up are in a different order, and some side quests activate at different times or in different locations. The transceiver has been replaced with a wireless Bluetooth headset, allowing Frank to continue performing all actions except talking to survivors while taking a call. There are 12 brand new combo weapons, such as the Saw Launcher, and one new psychopath, Adam the Clown's brother, Evan. It's easier and faster to earn money in Off the Record, with destroyed ATMs dropping twice as much cash as they did in Dead Rising 2. That said, Zombrex also costs twice as much now, starting at $50,000 instead of $25,000. The Zombrex stashes have also been moved around, however going to their old locations will still reward you with powerful weapons or security box keys. Security box keys are one of the more significant changes. These 20 keys are hidden throughout the game and can be taken to their corresponding security boxes to unlock goodies. Most of these just contain money, however some will give you weapons, books, or even Zombrex. The Fortune City Bank, which houses the security boxes, is located in a brand new area of the map called the Uranus Zone. It's essentially a space-themed carnival which provides some new zombie skins, weapons, and a means of connecting Atlantica Casino with South Plaza. While it does fill a spot of the map that just looked empty before, the Uranus Zone feels very out of place. Fortune City is described as an adult's playground and is suitably filled with slot machines, nightclubs, and shopping districts. This childish theme park doesn't suit the vibe or tone of the rest of your surroundings, and entering it is particularly jarring. I also lacked any incentive to visit it, because the eight stores found there can also be found in existing sections of the map. I've only visited it for the security boxes and PP stickers. Speaking of, photography returns from Dead Rising 1, a mechanic I didn't talk about very much in my review of that game. Frank's a photojournalist and always has his camera with him. By taking photos of the events around you, you can earn experience points. The amount of points you earn depends on the content of the photo. There are also stickers hidden around the environment which you can photograph for bonus experience, giving you a reason to explore. To be honest, I always found there were other, faster ways of leveling up, and have never bothered to take many photos. The biggest change by far is the removal of the Terror is Reality Online mode. In its place is Sandbox mode. There's no time limit, all survivors are hostile, and there are numerous challenges to complete across the map, most of which ask you to kill a set number of zombies within a certain time limit. 
it can be a lot of fun, and it's great to be able to blow off some steam, level up, and earn money without having to worry about hindering your story progression or missing a survivor. The problem is, these challenges all reward you with money, but I've never needed much cash in either version of Dead Rising 2 due to being able to make my own combo weapons and finding Zombrex in secret locations or earning the medication from side quests. When I first saw footage of this game, I thought I was looking at a well-made mod put together by fans or some official DLC for the base Dead Rising 2. I would never have guessed that it was a standalone, full-price retail release, and I'm admittedly sour about that. The game's executive producer has gone on record as saying that Off The Record was simply too big to be DLC, even going as far as to reveal that a director's cut of Dead Rising 2 was part of the contract when Blue Castle were first approached by Capcom. Bearing in mind that this was a 2011 game, they can't excuse themselves by claiming they didn't know what was possible with DLC. Worse still, Off The Record then had its own DLC which included a pack for cheat codes. Yes, Capcom had the balls to charge you £3.39 for things like Big Head Mode and Infinite Ammo. You know, the kind of codes that used to be included in games for free. I'll be honest, I did not expect this to be a long video or review on the basis that I don't know who this game is for. Fans of the series have already played through Dead Rising 2, and therefore they don't need a slightly altered version of it with a few changes and additions here and there. If you're new to the series, I can't recommend this to you. I can't. It's entirely non-canonical. You may as well just go play the proper Dead Rising 2. This game does not do enough on its own. In fact, this feels like a cheap cash grab. It should have really been an expansion pack or some DLC for the base Dead Rising 2, but no, Capcom wanted to squeeze that little bit of money out of you by putting it out as a full release, which I can't abide by. Now, I would go on to Dead Rising 3 next, however, the last time I said I was jumping straight to Dead Rising 3, a few of you said, well, hang on, that's not covering everything, and you're quite right. So, next time is going to be Dead Rising 2 Case Zero and Dead Rising 2 Case West, which will see Frank West and Chuck Green team up. Yeah, be sure to come back for that. Pure fans of the series will have already... Pure fans. Sound like a fucking twat. This week we were originally... This week, it's not fucking weekly.